Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in this video we're going to talk a little bit about soldering and soldering equipment, what you'll need to do the job. Now what I've got here is a section of my stuff obviously. Here is the handpiece for a hot air station, which is the quick A61DW, I did a review on that. I'll put links down below for these items as well in the review videos and things like that which I mentioned. Here is the handpiece for the Pros Kit desoldering station. This is like a desoldering gun. Here's the body of it just over here. See it there. Here's my JBUD 1200 soldering station. This is a really high power station. It works really well. Very happy with this. I've done a review on this as well. I've done reviews on all these things I think. I use leaded solder myself, not unleaded or lead free because it just suits what I do. I prefer leaded solder. It gives more robust connections. It doesn't have the same failure rate as unleaded solder. Here is a Miniware TS100 iron with a big power brick which I use for it. This is quite handy if you need a portable iron which you just need to go and take some and plug it in. Was it 12 to 24 volts input? And the more power you put in the way, the higher the wattage will be on this thing. Handy little iron to have. I don't use this iron very often but it's handy to have because sometimes taking it somewhere and plugging it into something is really useful. A lovely little trick I've used for this iron is actually using a UPS. Get a UPS which unplug it from power, plug this iron into the UPS, turn the UPS on and use the UPS to run the iron to do soldering outdoors and stuff like that. Really handy. <laughs> Here's a mini hot plate. This is literally a mini hot plate. It's like that sort of square. I might even get it out of the box. So this is also from Miniware. Here it is. A little mini hot plate. Tiny little thing. Runs off USB-C. Put on the back there, it's got colour buttons and you can use this for doing service mount work on small PCBs. If you're designing a PCB it's not very big, you know, it's got a couple of inches or so. You can actually use this little hot plate here to mount your service mount components. This will heat the board up and you can place your components and solder them with this thing. Really handy, I've used this a couple of times, it's been really good. I didn't actually do a review on this, I think I bought that myself, so I didn't do a review. Other things you should have, solder wick. Definitely need this. So this is really good for cleaning out holes in, in through hole PCBs or cleaning up pads. If you lift a part off because you need to replace it or whatever, you can use this to clean the circuit board off and get off the excess solder before you replace it with new stuff. I've got a few different widths here and surfaces. Very handy to have. I'll chuck links down below for that as well. Over here, you may just sort of see poke in the corner. This is a home-built DIY fume extractor. So this is literally a wall-mounted extractor fan. And I can see I've got some ducting on here which runs down the back of the desk. And on the other end of that is a filter box which I made. I actually did a project on this, I did a video all about it. So I might chuck a link down below for that as well. And that filter box you can actually make yourself, it's just 3D printed. So I actually got the files on Thingiverse. So if you want to, you can download those files, print your own box for the filters and make yourself a little simple fume extractor system for something like this. This is 100mm ducting, that's what it's all based around. And all I did basically is modify this, put a switch on the top of it and make that switchable so I can turn the thing on and off from there. Nice and easy. Super convenient. This isn't as good as a proper commercial fume extractor. If you've got the funds, buy a proper one because the filtration's better. As long as you get the right type. There are types which are just a single filter and it's literally in the front, out the back. It's just like literally a fan, nothing else. Those aren't so good. Mine is a bit like that, but I've got a filter box in the bottom there which has got three filters on it, so it's lower pressure, so it goes through the filters slower to just give better filtration and things like that, so it's not trying to push it straight through. But yeah, you can build your own extractor, but you can buy commercial ones, and I'd say if you've got the funds, buy a proper commercial one. Pop a box with decent filters in it, HEPA filters and what have you, and use that, because that would be far better. Not breathing in the fumes while soldering is quite an important thing. Any kinds of chemical ingestion is not good for you. So when you're soldering, don't breathe those fumes in. Always try and have some kind of extractor system. You know, if you've got good ventilation, you now have a window open if you can, like this. I've got a filter box on it, but you may be able to, in your situation, extract that to the outside and just pump it out through a wall or through a ceiling cavity or whatever, and actually just go outside the house, outside your building. You could do that. That would be ideal while I'm trying to filter it. Another iron I've got, which is the KSGER, which is a T12 soldering station. Quite a small, compact little thing. That was a really good station. I've actually still got it, but it's in my other labs. I can't demonstrate it to you right now because it's set up out there. I recommend that as a good starter unit as well. This is quite an expensive station. If you've got the funds, get this. If not, get the KSGER, because that's a good station for the money. Play air stations, sure, there's lots of them out there. This is a relatively expensive one. It's a, it's a quick 861DW. I've done a review on this. Check the playlist out for that. Or the links down below. But again, this is a fair outlay of money. 
in most situations you don't need one as good as this you can actually use a cheaper unit but if you can afford to get a better one then do because you won't regret it uh, desoldering gun like i said i've had this for a little while now i absolutely love it it's a brilliant thing really easy to use it's basically a soldering iron and when you squeeze the trigger it turns the vacuum on sucks the solder up so this is basically a posh way of doing those handheld solder pumps you've got those little tubes there's a little button on the side little piston and you just push the piston down and you push the button and it sucks the solder out i used one of those for years and they're fine and they're okay they serve a purpose having something like this is far better again if you can afford it get a proper desoldering gun if you're taking parts out of circuit board especially through hole stuff if you do a lot of through hole stuff or anything like that then this is definitely something you want you want one of these because it makes your life so much easier the handheld ones are okay they get you out of trouble they do the job but they're not as nice as someone's this and it also solder wick can also do the same job you know you can get solder wick to clear out holes and through hole boards you can do it it can be a bit more missing around though sometimes this is usually pretty simple but you were taking out things like ICs you know, integrated circuits which are through hole type taking those out of circuit boards that can be a real pain tool like this makes it easy so I talk about hot plates like I said before this one this is a little mini one which I demonstrated we've also got a big hot plate which is 30 centimeters square that's really good for doing larger circuit boards if you're doing service mount stuff again for assembling boards but you can also use that for dismantling service mount boards you put the board on there and heat up all the solder across the whole board and you can take parts off as required if you need to refly a board hot air is probably better for more directed individual component kind of assembly but if you're doing a big board then get a hot plate because they're really convenient now in modern days people are using lead free solder a lot I'd say I'd use leaded still lead free solder is usable you can use it but personally I don't like it because it doesn't seem to last as well as this leaded solder a lot of electronic equipment which fails these days in modern times TVs and what have you if they're failing tend to have issues with the lead free solder where the solder joints will crack because the lead free solder just doesn't work as well it doesn't like that thermal as much leaded solder has got a bit more give in it it's a bit more forgiving and it'll actually last longer so although they've got the lead free solder for environmental reasons which is absolutely fine i certainly understand why because lead is not a good metal to have around i think the trade-off there is that the equipment these days is actually not lasting as long so instead of using a bit of leaded solder to assemble this thing you've got lead free solder which is other metals and stuff in it instead which is more environment friendly but then the equipment doesn't last so instead of lasting five years or ten years maybe the solder joints fail People which don't know any better think, oh, the TV's blown up, and they throw it away and get another one after two or three years. So instead of being more environmentally friendly by using lead free solder, it ends up being less environmentally friendly because equipment's being replaced far more frequently. So instead of just having a bit of lead in the solder joints, now you're replacing an entire TV. I think that's worse for the environment than a bit of lead, to be honest, because you've got all the trade offs with the equipment which has gone into making that, that TV, you know? Anyway, and it costs you more. That's besides the point. That's why I use leaded solder. It's better than lead free in my experience. Maybe you want to disagree with that and put some comments down below, but if you're starting out from new, by all means, use lead free. No reason why you shouldn't use lead free for starting out from scratch and you're not repairing our old equipment. I mean, a lot of modern equipment is made lead free. So no reason why you shouldn't be losing lead free yourself if you're doing stuff. You're not too worried about lasting 10 years or 20 years or whatever. By all means, use lead free. But personally, I use leaded because a lot of stuff I work on is old test equipment and it uses leaded solder. This is even silver solder. This one here has got silver in it. Even high quality. So, yeah. Take a look at the playlist here for the rest of the Electronic Tools for Beginners series. There's a playlist here, YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link over here if you haven't already subscribed, which you should definitely do. And over there is a Patreon support link if you feel like supporting the channel, helping to make more content. Bye.